shut up. Time to go, Frank. Mm. Oh, what time is it? Five-ish. Oh, Christ. Just think, darling. Mm. In a couple of weeks, you'll be getting up with me. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'll be your boss. I can stay in bed. To rate the guy this week. Sorry, Joe, Tom, it was a bitch. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. That's a lie, Frank. No, it isn't. It's six o'clock in the morning. Hey, should we get some breakfast? You know, come back when you've finished. Come on. Mm. Oh, tell me about it. Listen, uh, are you an always after the shift? Yeah, why? Uh, I thought we might go for a drink. Okay, any particular reason? Uh, no, no, no. Come on, Frank. Okay, go. Come this is your life. Connor Turney? He's next door. I'm D.S. McMullen from Bridewell. Connor Turney, I'm arresting your suspicion of conspiracy to supply caffeine drugs. I'm not obliged to say anything, but it may harm your defence. Hello? If you do not mention the question, something you later will lie on in court. Anything you do say will be given in evidence. Yeah, it's a guy next door, I tell you. Does, uh, this belong to you? How did that get there? You want to get your kit on, Connor? Thank you. How are we doing? A uh, small amount of smack on the table. Good. Keep going. Yeah, listen, sorry it's a bit of a mess. I just had the place thing, Shuey. Is uh, this stuff yours, Connor? You know, there was this, uh, this, this weird humming noise last night. Strange lights outside the window. I didn't think much of it at the time, but you know... A source full of aliens broke in to do their drugs in your front room. I'm starting to think it's a possibility. This yours? No. It's okay, Connie. You can admit to the palace. The palace legal. Yeah, it's not mine, okay? Does he talk? Not to you lot. Where's Lee? Who's Lee? He was sleeping there. It's his parrot. Where? The kid. What kid? He was here when I crashed out. This is son? What? No, he's 12. Brown hair, a kid. Well, we searched the premises, Connor. It's just you here. Yeah, how thorough was this search? Uh, I think we'd have found a sleeping boy. Maybe the aliens took him after they'd finished the gear. That's not funny! Now, where is he? He was here a couple of hours ago. He's only 12. It's a man out there, this estate! There's not a smack yet, please! Oh, Jesus, what's the matter with you, lot? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, can I call his mum? We'll do that. Who's the boy? Uh, he's a friend. Has anyone got a smoke? You've got a lot of twelve-year-old friends. He's a... Uh, he's the son of this girl I've been seeing. He's a nice kid. A sweet kid. He was here last night. Could you uh, give us their address, please, Connor? It's just around the corner I could take you. Connor, you're part of a major investigation into the supply of drugs in this city. And the charges against you are very serious. You're under arrest. You're going to Bridewell. Bridewell? Here yeah, to be on our way, Bridewell. No problem. I really appreciate it. No! Don't worry. I'm sure it'll be fine. Come in. I had a go this morning. What's this? We raided the guy who we think is the source for the uncut heroin. 
Oh, the stuff that's causing all the accidental overdoses. We didn't find much in his flat. No cash, no scales. To be honest, he seemed more like a user than a dealer. But that doesn't mean anything. You go at him. Get him to tell you where the dangerous stuff is coming from. Right. Can we get on with this meeting, please? John Sullivan. Well, as I said in my report, the last time we ended up in his bedroom with a lot of big promises and a blunt sexual overture. And you concluded, therefore, this whole thing was a waste of time? I didn't say that. I said it was a possibility. It's not unusual for a handler and an informant to develop a certain intimacy. Oh, you think she should shag him? I didn't say that. Oh, sorry, I must have misheard. What do you want to do, Dipoli? I don't know, but I'm uncomfortable with the whole situation. You see, a prize like this is worth a little discomfort, surely. I mean, nobody said it was going to be easy. There's a real possibility he's going to give us a huge haul of drugs. I'm just not sure he is. Yes, but you're not sure that he isn't, are you? I mean, think of the good we can do here. Think of the publicity. Hmm? That's precisely the kind of whinging cynicism that drives me mad about you, Jones. Okay. I think we should pursue this a little further. But at the end of the day, it is up to you. Take your time to think about it. Hmm? Okay. Let me know your decision. What's going on? Oh, just some uh, old bollocks Hill wants me to do. Help boost female recruitment or something. Well, I'm all for that. Well, anything that helps get rid of that old-fashioned macho culture. Wanker. Are we ready to go at Tierney, then? Sure. Have you done an interview plan? Well, I thought you could leave the question and, and I'd just stare at him and look all moody like Steve McQueen. You're not still sulking about that, are you? I'm not sulking about anything. What's wrong with you, then? His beloved Carmen has Mr. Bale signing. He phoned the rehab and she's run away. Callahan, you're not going to tell me you're surprised. Yeah, I am. Well, I hate to say I told you so. No, you don't. Listen, Callie, you know, your faith in, in human nature is sort of touching. Really, but, uh, you know, don't let it get to you. Anyway, listen, um, I want to talk to you about a situation, um, a work situation. It's just, it's just I, uh, I need some advice. Don't let it get to you. That's my advice. You sure you don't want a sinister present? Ah, uh, no thanks. I've already eaten. Listen, Connor. There's a sense here in which things aren't looking too hot for you. Any news on Lee yet? His mother's not in. Someone's calling the school. He never misses school. Especially not today. Today's art, and that's his favourite. Have you any idea why you've been arrested? Um, conspiracy to supply Class A drugs, heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, so forth. Have you got anything to say about that? Uh, no. Thank you. We found a white powdered substance on your premises. It's been sent to the labs. When it gets back, what are they going to tell us it is? You know, I, I try not to anticipate problems before they occur. You know. Will they tell us it's heroin? Well, it's hard to tell at this stage. I may have been mistaken about the flashing lights. How do you account for its presence on your premises? Well, I'm starting to wonder if it wasn't there before I moved in. Well, when did you move in? A couple of years ago now, but you know, this is why I had to let the cleaner go. Do you admit it was heroin? Uh, no. Thank you. You're aware you could be facing a custodial sentence? You're right, but I would seek to persuade the court of my... Uh, my essential good character. A bit of cooperation here might make that easier. He never misses school usually. Hmm? He's wearing a Liverpool top. 98 season, Homer strip. Number 10, Michael Owen. Blue Levi jeans, Asics trainers, brown hair. Lee, did I tell you that? Listen, Connor. Don't you think you should concentrate a bit more on your own problems here? You're right. Thank you. You're on social security? Uh, disability. Well, what's the nature of the disability? Psychological. What does that mean? Oh, you know, I've got problems. Harnessing my energies in a conventional sense. 
life insurance, house insurance, health insurance, car insurance and so forth. Holding down a job? Prosaically. So how do you afford the heroin then, huh, Connor? Do you steal? Oh, no. Oh, well, that'd be far too stressful. Really, no, I like, I like the quiet life. Oh, which reminds me, next time you can just knock on the door, you know. If there is a next time, which obviously we all hope there won't be, eh? Then maybe you deal. No. I just try and get by, you know. I like to be on good terms in the world. I like to sleep at night. Or during the day or any time, really. Do you know a girl called Denise Bateman? Er, uh, mm, don't think so. She ended up in the Royal last week because the heroin she took was a lot stronger than she was used to. It was nearly pure. She went into a coma. Oh, I'm sorry about that. She could have died. Although I don't know her. It's one of four accidental overdoses we are looking at. And we've been given information that you supplied that heroin to Denise Bateman. I just want you to understand the seriousness of your position. Thank you. And give you the chance to tell us where you got this stuff so that nobody else gets hurt. You should suspend the interview. I'll go and see if the mother's back. Thursday, Carrie, Auntie S. McMullen from Bridewell. Could I come in a minute, please? It's not a good time right now. It's about your son. Okay. Story so far. Time of death, early this morning. Cause of death, probably asphyxiation. Half-empty bottle of methadone was found on the boy. That would probably account for it. No sign of violence to the body. All the clothes. It's like he just went to sleep in the grass. That's not what the mother's saying. This is Carrie. I'm very sorry about this one. Now, if we could just go back over what happened when you last saw Lee. He went to bed. And in the morning he was gone. He'd gone out. For the money. What money? He came round. He offered him money for a job. Who's this? Connor. Tini? Is Tini your boyfriend? I dumped the bastard. What job is this? They got rid of him. Out the army. Because he's not right. You know, even the army. God help me, when I met him, I didn't know that. I'd never have let him near Lee. And I was lonely. Did you have any idea that Connor Taney was using drugs? At the end. When Lee wanted to go with him. For the money. I said he couldn't. He had school, but he was gone. Why didn't he call the police? I knew where he was. But there was no one there. He does all this charming stuff, you know. But he's not right in the head. I mean, you think he is, but he isn't. I didn't want to see him again, but he kept coming round, always coming round. Ask anyone. Why would he want to harm me, Mrs. Gary? I don't know. Because he's a smackhead, a nutter. Look, what are you asking me this for? I want him arrested. I want him to suffer like I'm suffering. I want him dead. I want him dead!
Carla, we're going to give you another chance to get us to Lester. We'd like to ask you some questions about Lee. I'm afraid he's dead. Ah, uh, well. That's okay then. Fine. Your brother Ian called and Sue. No, but not Carmen. Uh, me and Joe are off to get some background on the kid. Okay, boss? Yeah, okay, yeah. The media are swarming around downstairs. Oh, that's something at least. What? Well, this is all your fault. If you'd have allowed us to carry out this investigation instead of wasting our time on that precious little sauna, everything would have been different. That boy will still be alive. We don't know that. We don't know anything because you're too busy mining of me to do your job. Now, if there's half a chance that this is murder, I want to know about it today. So just get on with it. I want to sit in on this one. Well, maybe we should just see what he's got to say first. What, you mean you don't want me to sit in on it? No, Howard, we don't. You go flying off with this guy like you always do, they're going to fry us for intimidation when it gets to court. So why don't you just sit up here and cool off? Jesus Christ, can I? You'll get over it. Or maybe that's just my touching faith in human nature. What's the matter with you? Oh, look, what is it with you and Carmen, anyway, huh? Well, have you got a thing for her or something? No, I do not have a thing for Carmen. Hey, look, she's just another junkie, OK? You skipped bail. You gave her a chance, she didn't want it. I'm sorry, but just don't crucify me over it, OK? You know, it rips me off inside the poorly that there's a girl like Carmen. She can't stay off drugs. She's going to end up in Walton, or half buried on some patch of waste ground like a friend, Katrina Mackey. It rips me up that there's a 12-year-old kid in the morgue. Some junkie down in his cell smashing up tables because maybe he's done something so terrible that he just can't face it. I can't stand it. Some days I want to throw myself down these fucking stairs. It rips me up. You understand that? It rips me up. You and me, we got nothing in common. Tell us about Lee. Lee. Lee Carey. Lee Carey. The week he was born, his mother went on holiday with this bloke she met at the hospital. She left the baby with a friend because it wasn't a dad. He didn't have a name yet. Lee Carey. He kept finding it on the floor, you know, his mother always on the floor. He used to try and wake her up. He could never understand why she was always asleep. Why she was always sick. <laughs> he wanted to be a doctor so he could make her better. He did the shopping and the cleaning and the washing up. He wanted to go to Africa and the moon. And he had a parrot called Lucky. The 10th of May, 1987. 18th of June, 1999. I'll never forget you, Lee Carey.
He said he was at your flat last night. You've got to be honest about what happened. You've got to tell us how it was. But does it matter who it was, eh? He's dead. He was 12 years old. We found him lying face down in a patch of grass. He was sleeping in your flat and now he's dead. It matters to us. Tell us what happened. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember! How convenient. There is nothing convenient about being me. I just... I don't remember how it was. Lee was always around my flat. Why would a 12-year-old boy hang around with a heroin addict like you? A man so stimulating, he can't remember what he was doing from one day to the next. That's unfair. You're a dealer. What did he do? Run errands for you or what, hmm? No. Take drugs around the place to people? No. His mum's doing this black guy, right? And she doesn't like the kid being around, you know, when it's all going down, jiggity jiggity. Because the guy's black. So she gives him some money and tells him to go away for a few hours. Only it's not safe that I stay, so I always tell him to come over to mine. And he'd come over to mine and we'd talk. I watch videos or whatever, although recently I've had technical problems in my video, but he comes over and he tells me what he wants to do with his life. And I tell him to get out. Get out the Grove Park Estate, kid. And keep going. And you know he would have. He would have. Is that what happened last night? I don't remember. Lee had some methadone on him. Do you know where he got that from? No. Did you give him that methadone, Connor? No. Do you have any methadone? No! Guess what? Connor? I'm gonna ask you about the methadone again. I thought we'd been through this. I'm asking you again. It's just that I'm getting a bit of deja vu here, you know? Did you give it to Lee? Groundhog Day kind of thing. The bottle of methadone had fingerprints on it. Lee's. And yours. No. Did you deliberately give Lee Carey that methadone? Did you give a 12-year-old boy a lethal dose of heroin substitute knowing it would kill him? Connor Tierney, I am warning you. If you fail or refuse to answer these questions, a court may draw their own inference. Blah, blah, blah. You've got to help yourself here, Connor. I don't want to help myself! Jesus Christ, would someone who wants to help myself be here talking to you about this? Oh my God, it was me. What was? I keep mine hidden. I swear. Well hidden. But a place like where I live, I mean, you've been there, haven't you? I mean, you know, you can't hide stuff. If someone wants to find it, I mean, if, if someone wants to try something out, if someone is just curious. Oh, it's that your sinister stuff, methadone. Evil. Now a syringe. That's nasty. No one wants to stick one of them in your arms. Methadone, it's just green medicine. Just swallow it down and you feel just fine. I told him how many times, don't touch this thing, Lee. Don't let it in. This is my life. Look at me. I'll do what I say, lad. I never lie to him. But fathers, you just want to be like your dad, don't you? You want to do what he does. So he love you. You just want to be loved. Everyone just wants to be
Tierney says it was an accident. The boy got hold of the mess, so don't try it out. End of story. Do we believe him? Proving anything else is going to be tough. What about the mother? The mother's got no record, not known to social services. The neighbours say she keeps herself to herself. They knew Tierney, he came round a lot. They round a lot. Yeah, Lee was a model pupil, well turned out, good attendance record. His teacher was crying her eyes. I couldn't believe he'd be involved in drugs. Right. Take a break. Get some food, come back fresh. Get a teeny about the uncut smack he was selling. Why is this overtime? Anyone wants a drink, I'm buying. Sure. Thanks, but I've got some shit to do. Oh, yeah? What kind of shit? What? Well, it's a simple question. Why won't you come for a drink with me? You've always got something to do these days. You pissed off with me or something? No. You've got a man on the go, then. For God's sake, Frank, not everyone wants to drink themselves to death in the break time, you know. See you later. Um, give me a call. I'll catch up with you. I'm going looking for Colin. No. Julie Callahan's just arrived and she's going to be out in a minute. And I know you've got something on your mind. You do? I uh, understand you went to see my daughter, Georgie. At the height of my latest difficulties vis-a-vis -vis authority. Did Callie tell you that? Yep. Firstly, yeah. Uh, Thanks for, um... Hey, don't worry about it. Secondly? I was just wondering how she was. You want to get back in touch again? Maybe. Well, look, Frank, you walked out on her life. That was your choice. You had your reasons. And she's old enough to understand that now, maybe. But she's a big girl now. And very beautiful. But underneath it all, she's just a kid crying out for her dad. You want to do something about it after all this time, that's a big move. You've got some groveling to do. The worst thing you can do is buy her a bunch of flowers and disappear for another ten years. Got it? She is beautiful, isn't she? He just he said he wanted to see me about something. So how are you, Mark? Not been around in a while. I'm pretty busy at work, you know? Yeah. Is Polly okay? Yeah, yeah. You? I am, yeah. I'm bearing up, thanks. Listen, I'm running a bit late, so I'll be seeing you, yeah? Sure. Listen, Patrick, do you remember that girl, Carmen? Carmen? Yeah, you know, the one you got on the detox that time. Oh, yeah. You ever hear from her again? I called her up one time, see how she was doing, right? She's left the rehab. Maybe she just wasn't ready. Yeah. Maybe you should have... 
just shot one of their legs off. You ever hear from her again, you get her to call me, yeah? She was all right, eh? Yeah, she was. The press conference was a load of bollocks. Tell him. What? The mother was trying to sell us the story. You're joking. She was asking for 20 grand. What was the story? Don't know exactly. We wouldn't touch it. But she was offering us photos of her son and stuff, the usual. She was a hard-nosed bitch. Had a solicitor as well. The whole deal. Paulie's on the terrace. Why don't you take a drink out to her? She'll be back in a minute. Well, go on, you bastard. What about you? Oh, come on, Callie. In my condition, the walk could be fatal. Would you just do it now? It's been a nightmare putting them two together. You're wasting your time, Frank. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, come on. Have you ever known such a dreadful mismatch in all your life? They kill each other in a year. Maybe I'm just a big, floppy heart is romantic. <laughs> you heard the latest bollocks. The just friends policy. Can't last, obviously. What I can't work out is, are they both trying to kid themselves, or just each other, or both of those things simultaneously? What do you think? Run that by me again. So, did you find Carmen? It's just I know you went to look for her. Listen, Callahan. my uh, attitude towards that situation was perhaps unduly dismissive, initially. Is that so? No. You did go to look for her, though, didn't you? You, uh, you wanted to ask me something. A while ago, John Sullivan phones up and says he wants to meet me professionally. And so I tell Helen Howard and they say go and see what he wants. Anyway, it turns out eventually that John's got some information that he wants to give us. A drug stuff, big deal, so he says. But obviously I wasn't allowed to tell anyone. Not even you. You do understand that, don't you? Yeah. What did he give you? Nothing. Nothing, that's it. But he's making moves on you. Yeah. Yeah, and Hill saying go for it, and Howard saying back off, and, you know, you know John, and we don't, so I was just wondering what you thought. Did you sleep with him? No. Did you want to? It's just not a possibility. Did you want to? It can't happen. What do you want to do? Power call. Connor Tanner just tried to kill himself in his cell. Tierney's fined the court and before he had time to actually hang himself. So we don't know whether he's really going to do it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, listen, Joe's just phoned up. The mother's come in. She's downstairs with a lawyer. Hold off on Tierney. Come on, let's see what she wants. What can we do for you, Mrs Carey? Mrs Carey has asked me to raise the question of compensation. What? Uh, she feels she's entitled to compensation for the loss of her son. Uh, financially. Who from exactly? I understand you've been attempting to sell the story of your son's death to a local paper. 
What are you looking like that for? My Lee's dead. What am I supposed to do? Who's going to look after me when I'm old? I raised him. Do you know how much that costs? Clothes, trainers, food, drinks, sweets, nappies. Year after year, always trapped. It's like being in prison. Do you know what that's like? And some days you could scream forever. He was clever, Ollie. He was going to be a doctor. He'd have made good money. No one has the right to take my kid away from me. No one. Someone's going to pay. They're going to pay. What was he wearing when you last saw him, Lee? Oh, Christ. What was his favourite subject at school? What? At school, what was his favourite subject? Who was his best friend? What teachers did he hate most? What class was he in? I don't have to take this shit. You've got no right to ask me this. No right. What was his favourite tea? What did he like doing? What videos did he like to watch? What music would he listen to? What size shoes did he take? Don't you run away from this! Don't you run away from this. You stay and you answer our questions. Are you arresting Mrs Carey? So, here I am, still. Unemployed man, former human being, 31 of no fixed life. Sorry I was discourteous to you earlier. Forget it. You know, my dad was always, um, manners. He was a good man, effortlessly. We want to ask you about the uncut heroin you sold Denise Bateman. And you know, I'm glad he's dead. So we can see how it worked out for me. How long were you seeing Lee's mother? A while. Yeah, how long's a while? Two weeks, two years? Yeah, something like that. Did she know you were an addict? It may have crossed her mind. That must have been a lot to put up with. That's true, but I did my bit. Now tell me about your bit. You know, cleaning the flat, doing the shopping, running errands, going to the laundrette, looking after Lee, babysitting, making dinner, picking him up after school. Oh, yeah, and the, uh, you know, the servicing of her physical needs, you know, when necessary. Did she pay you? Oh no, going to the laundry was reward enough in itself. Shall I repeat the question? It is, it's Groundhog Day! What did you get in return? She was your dealer, wasn't she, Bernadette? The methadone, Connor. The stuff Lee took, you got that from his mother too, didn't you? Do you know, the world is a terrible place. I mean, if there is a God, I cannot understand how any mind can be so evil. Listen, Connor. I want you to make a statement saying where you got the heroin. So that we can get a warrant and raid a house. What's the point in that? We've told you about the accidental overdoses. We want to stop them happening. Yeah, well, that's been bothering me. That overdose girl, Denise. That she said I gave her some smack, because I don't know her. But I've been thinking that maybe her name's Minnie. That's what they call her, but... But maybe her real name's Denise. I mean, that would make sense. I think someone called her that once. Is that possible? We can check. Yeah, that would make some sense. We don't normally have much to do with each other, right? But when you're coming off and your dealer's letting you down, I mean, you hit the yellow pages, anybody you can ever remember. So, many comes around at a very inconvenient time. I'm waiting for this mate to bring this bloke around about the vigil. You know, it keeps fast forwarding, you know, when you, when you don't want it to. I mean, mate reckons this bloke can maybe fix it. Just a loose connection. But Minnie's standing there and she's crying. And I know what it's like when you're coming off and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Plus, she's a great looking girl. I mean, I don't know if you've ever met her. Anyway, I go around to Lee's, but no one's in. But I got a key and I know where Bernadette keeps a stash. So I help myself, I give Minnie enough, she says thanks, gives me the money, and I leave the money with a note for Bernadette explaining the situation. And the bummer is, wouldn't you know it, I missed the video guy. Another ten minutes would have been okay. Things still doesn't work. Minnie could have died, Connor. Which is how come the mistake arose. 
Because when you got uncut heroin floating around, there's always a mistake. I mean, no one in their right mind's gonna give away uncut stuff. It doesn't make any sense. Especially not Bernadette. And the stuff I took... Well, Bernadette hadn't got round to cutting it up yet. And I couldn't tell, because you can't tell by looking at it. And the others you mentioned. Well, that had been Minnie selling it on before she realised how strong it was. Will you give us a statement? No. No, I don't want to do that. Sorry. Why not? Because when it comes down to my account, I'm going to take the consequences. For someone else. That makes no sense. Sense? Sense. I did this job once in Iraq. Driving out into the desert every morning after breakfast looking for wreckage. Neutralise and remove safely. I remember there was this tank stuck up on the ridge, one of ours. It had taken a hit in the side and when we got up there, there was two blokes stuck in the hole. They'd been trying to get out of the hole, fighting to get out and they got stuck. And they burned alive. And they cooked, just melted together. We bagged them up and had lunch. Now then, does that make any more sense to you? Does that make any more sense? I don't care about your old war stories. I want you to tell us that you got the heroin from Bernadette Carey so that we can arrest her. No. Why not? Because Lee wouldn't have wanted it. Lee would not want me to do that to his mother. She's had an hard life. She got passed around in care, out of care, children's homes, foster homes. If it's made her hard, it's no surprise. It was her methadone that killed him. Lee loved her. He looked after her. And she was all he ever had. And he wasn't old enough to know what she was and what she wasn't, so no. No, I'm not going to do that. Lee wouldn't have wanted it. Lee wouldn't have wanted his mother trying to sell her story to the Echo this afternoon for 20 grand. Would he? What? Plus photographs. Sorry to interrupt your grief. Bernadette Carey, I'm arresting you on suspicion of conspiracy to supply Class A drugs. You what? You're not obliged to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention or question something you later rely on in court. Bingo. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. How's Joe? Her nose is broken. Paulie's taking her down to the Royal. She's in a bit of a mess, though, poor kid. Stick a salt on the charge. Sure. Hey, listen, uh, I need a favour. Something I said I might be able to do for someone. to drop it for now. Thank you. Going home? You want a lift? No. We're not going trailing round after Carmen, are we? Do you want to shut up about Carmen? Just a thought. I wouldn't put it past you, then. We're not looking for Carmen, OK? So where are we going? You want to walk? I just asked you, where are we going? Your brother Ian's been calling all day. I want to see what he wants. Has he got alcohol? Yeah. Really need a drink. Well, he's always got plenty of booze in. Really? 
He's a priest. That's what he tells people. Hello. Hi. We want a drink. In the kitchen. Have you done okay? Not exactly. It's just you've got that uh, this is all your fault expression on. Now is not the time, Mark. Hey, you having a drink? Yeah, thanks. So, will your lady friend be joining us, Patrick? <sighs> She'll be down in a minute. Lady friend? Oh, yes. Lady friend. I got him some earplugs put in. You just won't wear them. What can you do? Confine your frenzy of fornication to relatively civilised hours. Just a suggestion. Love is a sacred and holy thing. Patrick's getting his own place soon. Did he tell you? Hey, Father, I hope you don't mind. I um, borrowed your dress and gone off to my bath. Help yourself, Carl. Hey, Carly. Hey, Marlon. I bet you're surprised to see me here. Oh, and don't be angry, Carly. I know, I miss my bail signing. I just lost track of things. I'll phone them up and I'm going to go in tomorrow. 